In 1907, Pope St. Pius X condemned modernism in his encyclical Pescendi on the doctrine of the modernists. He referred to men speaking perverse things and vain talkers and seducers with relation to members of the ranks of the priesthood itself. According to the Pope, relying upon a false conscience, they attempt to ascribe to a love of truth that which is in reality the result of pride and obstinacy. According to modernism, there is no such thing as objective truth. The commonly recognized founder of modernism is George Tyrrell. George Tyrrell was an Irish Jesuit priest in the late 19th century who attempted to evolve and adapt Catholic theology in the context of modern ideas. He wrote the book Hard Sayings in 1898. In it, the modernist priest speaks of the church having an infinite evolution, adding, the best thought of every age finds its highest ideals satisfied and surpassed. Tyrrell was excommunicated in 1908, one year after Pope Pius's encyclical. He died one year after his excommunication while refusing to renounce his modernist views. Another name that is commonly associated with the origins of modernism is Loisy, L-O-I-S-Y. Alfred Loisy, a French priest, was also excommunicated in 1908. He wrote the book, The Gospel and the Church, in 1903. He, like Tyrrell, endorsed the idea of the so-called evolution of Christianity. Loisy, again like Tyrrell, died failing to recant his heresy. In 2016, Cardinal Raymond Burke, speaking of Father Hardin, said he saw how decades of a thin and even false catechesis had created a situation in which many Catholics were illiterate regarding the faith. This false catechesis, which is necessarily followed by Catholic illiteracy, always results in the moral collapse of any society. The church does not evolve. There is a difference between what Alfred Loisy was trying to promote versus what John Henry Newman explained. The first is the evolution of dogma, which is a farce. That's a made up thing. It's a fairy tale. Dogma can't evolve because it is eternal truth, right? It can't evolve. John Henry Newman offered terminology which is the development of doctrine. That one's acceptable if it's understood the right way. The deposit of faith, the depositum fidei, which was handed to the apostles in the apostolic age and ended with the death of the last apostle, the church defends that and also interprets it through scripture and tradition. Today, Modernism, or false catechesis, has resulted in the moral collapse of American culture. 1965, 1969, 1973, and 2015 are significant years in recent American history. 65 represents the acceptance of contraception. 69 represents the acceptance of divorce. 73 represents the acceptance of abortion. And about 40 years later, in 2015, homosexuality was accepted. In 1965, although found nowhere in the U.S. Constitution, the Supreme Court ruled that married couples have a so-called right of privacy to use contraceptives. In 1969, California's no-fault divorce law, the first in the nation, got the ball rolling for every other state. Ten years later, this caused Stuart B. Walzer, a prominent matrimonial attorney at the time, to say, quote, Divorce has become part of the American way of life. 1973 is most well known as another, this time more grievous, intrinsic evil was legalized. The Supreme Court ruled out of thin air that the word person does not include the unborn. And in 2015, the sacrament of marriage was redefined by the Supreme Court when it ruled 5-4 to four in favor of the so-called right to same-sex marriage. These evils are not just legal, but widely accepted. With contraception, 93% of Americans do not believe birth control is morally wrong. With divorce, 82% do not believe it's morally wrong. With abortion, almost a full 80%, four out of every five Americans believe it should be legal. And with homosexuality, it's 72% of Americans who say it should be accepted by society. Among self-described Catholics, the false catechesis of modernism has proven to thoroughly corrupt the laity. 
With contraception, as of 2015, 76% of self-described Catholics believe the church should allow them to use birth control. And among Catholics who attend Mass weekly, just 13% say contraception is morally wrong. That's almost 90% of Mass-going Catholics rejecting the church's teaching on contraception. With divorce, almost half of all self-described Catholics believe it's not a sin to remarry after a divorce without an annulment. With abortion, as of 2020, 56% of Catholics say it should be legal in all or most cases. And with homosexuality, 61% of Catholics believe gay so-called marriage should be legal. Among these four evils that have been accepted by the culture as well as by self-identified Catholics, the two that have been significantly pushed by liberal prelates are contraception and homosexuality. Looking at contraception, this evil has always been condemned by the church. In 1930, when Anglicans became the first Christian denomination to accept contraception, Pope Pius XI, in his encyclical, Casti Canubi, reaffirmed the Church's unwavering teaching that those who use contraception, quote, sin against nature and commit a deed which is shameful and intrinsically vicious. Almost 40 years later, and virtually every other Christian denomination folded like the Anglicans and accepted the evil of contraception. Three years after the United States legalized it in 1965, Pope Paul VI crushed the hopes of liberal Catholics who wished the church would evolve with the times like Tyrrell and Loisy wanted. In his 1968 encyclical, Humanae Vitae, the Pope stated again what the church has always taught, that sexual intercourse, which is deliberately contraceptive, is intrinsically wrong. After the encyclical was published, 87 Roman Catholic theologians, 52 of them priests, signed a statement openly rejecting the Church's infallible teaching on contraception. The statement said the encyclical was, quote, "...insensitive to the witness of many men of goodwill, as it fails to acknowledge the witness of the separated Christian churches." To show how far astray these separated Christian so-called churches have gone from their roots, Martin Luther the man who led the 16th century revolt against the Catholic Church, which resulted in the tens of thousands of separated churches today, said about contraception, quote, This is a most disgraceful sin. It is far more atrocious than incest and adultery. We call it unchastity, yes, a sodomitic sin. The statement signed by the theologians against Humanae Vitae wrapped up in true modernist fashion. The encyclical demonstrates no development over the teaching of Pius XI's Casti Canubi. Looking to homosexuality, the desire for the Church to evolve on this issue has been pushed by the most influential members of the hierarchy for decades. This picture is from a June 30, 1991 Mass at Resurrection Catholic Church in Chicago, Illinois. Cardinal Joseph Bernadine is front and center, and the two beside him are Placido Rodriguez, an auxiliary bishop of Chicago at the time, and Raymond Gadert, who was vicar general of the Archdiocese of Chicago and was consecrated bishop by Bernadine a week later. Regarding Cardinal Bernadine and, and the gay banner holding, being held above the sanctuary during the holy sacrifice of the Mass, it basically shows Cardinal Bernadine's contempt for the Catholic faith. I mean, to take something, that, a sin that cries to heaven for vengeance, if you will, and to uh, celebrate it, with that flag, at the same time you're celebrating the holy sacrifice of the Mass, I think it clearly shows several things. First of all, Cardinal Bernadine and those bishops there, and any priests that participated, have no Catholic faith. They can't believe in sin, they can't believe in hell, and most importantly, well, not maybe not most importantly, they can't love their neighbor, because they're sending a message to the men, the homosexual community, somehow endorsing this sodomy lifestyle. And I think that's the real crime here, is they're sending people to hell, if you will, with their scandal. Today, the push for the embrace of what the church infallibly teaches is intrinsically evil is prevalent among many in the hierarchy. Fourteen successors of the apostles here, including one cardinal, signed off on a statement telling LGBT youth that God is on your side. How many gay priests do you think there are? I'm guessing, uh, maybe 40%. 
Who knows? If it was 40%, I wouldn't be surprised. If it was 80%, I wouldn't be surprised. St. Paul teaches, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor robbers will inherit the kingdom of God. Confirming sacred scripture, the Catechism teaches, Homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. They are contrary to the natural law. Under no circumstances can they be approved. By fornication, by adultery, by homosexual acts, you're getting farther and farther away from what God designed. It would be like if you, I gave you a DVD player as a present and every morning you put pancakes and syrup inside of it and it broke. Well, you can't blame the gift giver. You didn't use it right. So, of course, you're not going to be happy now. Your DVD is not serving its proper purpose. So that's what's going on there. And our ultimate end, all of us, St. Augustine said, my heart is restless until it rests in thee. A, a prayer that he writes down to God. That's true of all of us. We were made... We were made to know, to love, to serve, and to be with God for all of eternity. That's our happiness. So anytime we do anything where we choose anything over Him or His designs, we are leading to our unhappiness. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So we keep His commandments because we love Him and we know they're good for us, and they will lead to our ultimate happiness, which is a face-to-face -face union with God forever.